A ball is thrown into the air by a baby alien on a planet in the system of Alpha Centauri with a velocity of 31 feet per second. Its height in feet after t seconds is given by y equals 31t minus 15t squared. We're asked to find the average velocity for the time period beginning when t equals one and lasting a variety of time intervals. But notice how the time intervals are getting shorter and shorter or smaller and smaller. And then we're asked to use these average velocities to estimate the instantaneous velocity at t equals one. As the time intervals get smaller and smaller, the average velocities will approach the instantaneous velocity. Graphically, the average velocity is a slope of a secant line. The instantaneous velocity is a slope of a tangent line. Before we set this up, let's look at this graphically. The function y of t is graphed in red. The purple line is tangent to the curve at t equals one, which means the slope of the tangent line is the instantaneous velocity at t equals one. The green line is a secant line, and the slope of the secant line is equal to the average velocity over this particular time interval. As the time interval gets smaller and smaller, or as this point approaches the point of tangency, the slope of the secant line, or average velocity, approaches the slope of the tangent line, or the instantaneous velocity, which we see here. So going back to our work, the average velocity over a particular time interval is equal to the change of y divided by the change of t, which we can express using function notation as we see here. This formula should look familiar. In algebra, it's often expressed as the quantity y sub two minus y sub one divided by the quantity x sub two minus x sub one. And for all these intervals, we're always using one point where t equals one. Let's begin by determining what this point would be. So when t equals one, the point is one comma y of one. To determine y of one, we substitute one into the given function, which gives us 31 times one minus 15 times one squared, which equals 16. So for all the average velocities, we will always be using the point one comma 16 as the first point, which is also the point of tangency. The first time interval has a length of 0 0.01 seconds, which means the second point on the secant line is going to be 1.01 .01 comma y of 1.01. .01. We obtain 1.01 .01 by adding 0 .01 .01 to one, which means the average velocity over this time interval is y of 1.01 .01 minus y of one divided by the quantity 1.01 .01 one minus one. To determine the function value y of 1.01, .01, we substitute 1.01 .01 into our function y of t, which gives us 31 times 1.01 .01 minus 15 times 1.01 .01 squared. This expression is y of one, which we know is equal to 16. Let's determine this slope, which is the average velocity over this time interval using the calculator. And we'll show two ways to evaluate this. One way is to enter the entire expression on the home screen. But let's enter this in two parts. Let's first enter the numerator and then we'll divide by the denominator. In the numerator we have open parenthesis 31 times 1.01, .01, close parenthesis, minus 15 times 1.01 .01 squared, close parenthesis, minus, we know this is y of one which is just 16, let's just enter minus 16. Enter, this is the numerator, and now we need to divide by the denominator. So we press the division key, and notice how it shows answer divided by. This answer is the previous answer here of 0 .0085. Then in parentheses, we have 1.01 .01 minus one, close parenthesis, and enter. So the average velocity over the first time interval is 0.85 feet per second. but I also want to show how we can find this average velocity using function notation as shown here. To use function notation though, we need to enter our function y of t into the calculator under y1, but we'll use x instead of t. We press y equals, and notice I've already entered 31x minus 15x squared in y1. Now we can go back to the home screen and determine the average velocity using this notation here. So we'll press second mode, 
to go to the home screen. To access Y sub 1, we press VARS, right arrow, enter, enter, which brings Y1 back to the home screen. Then in parentheses, we have 1.01, .01, close parenthesis, minus Y of 1, which we know is 16, but I'll go ahead and enter Y of 1. So we press VARS, right arrow, enter, enter, in parentheses 1, enter. And now we divide by, again, the quantity 1.01 .01 minus 1, which of course is just 0 0.01, but I'll enter it in as shown here. So in parentheses, 1.01 .01 minus 1. And of course we get the same answer, 0 0.85 feet per second. So going back to our home screen, let's record the first average velocity. We do not enter the units here though. And now we need to do the same thing for the three remaining time intervals. Notice the next time interval is 0 0.005 seconds, followed by 0 0.002 seconds, and then 0 0.001 seconds. Let's go ahead and show the setup of all of these. For the time interval of 0 0.005 seconds, again, we know the first point is always going to be 1 comma 16. The second point is going to be 1.005 comma y of 1.005. Again, the 1.005 comes from taking the starting t value of 1 and adding the particular time interval, which means the average velocity over this time interval is y of 1.005 minus y of 1 divided by the quantity 1.005 minus 1. Again, this is the change of y or the change in height divided by the change in t or the change in time. And because there are so many of these to evaluate, we will be using the function notation on the calculator to save time. This time on the calculator, let's enter all this in at one time. To do this, we would need a set of parentheses around the numerator and denominator. So let's go ahead and clear this. We have open parenthesis, and now we need to enter y of 1.005, so vars, right arrow, enter, enter, and then in parentheses 1.005, minus y of 1, so minus, again, vars, right arrow, enter, enter, in parentheses, 1. Another close parenthesis for the numerator, and then we'll divide by the quantity 1.005 minus 1, or we could just divide by 0 0.005, but I'll enter the difference. So in parentheses, 1.005 minus 1, close parenthesis, enter, Notice now the average velocity is 0.925 feet per second. So we have 0 0.925 feet per second. Of course we know for the first time interval it was 0 0.85 feet per second. And now let's find the average velocity when the time interval is 0 0.002 seconds. Notice how, again, the first point is 1 comma 16. Now the second point is 1.002 comma y of 1.002, which means this is the slope of the secant line or the average velocity for this time interval. So going back to the calculator, another shortcut to save some time is to press second enter, which brings up the previous entry, but we can now edit the entry, which means we can just change 1.005 to 1.002. So if we scroll to the left, change this to 1.002, keep scrolling left. And change this 1.005 to 1.002, press enter. And now we have the average velocity over this time interval, which is 0.97 feet per second. The last time interval has a length of 0 0.001 seconds, and therefore the second point is 1.001 comma y of 1.001, .001, giving us an average velocity of this quotient. Going back to the calculator, let's press second enter and change the 1.002 to 1.001. .001. So pressing the left arrow, make the change here, and make the change here as well. and press enter. 
the last average velocity is 0.985 feet per second. From here, we're asked to estimate the instantaneous velocity at t equals one. So looking at the average velocities, as the time interval gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero, it does appear as if the instantaneous velocity is approaching the value of one. We will estimate the instantaneous velocity as one foot per second. Now I do want to mention in our homework, if the average velocities don't come out to nice values, you can round to four decimal places. I hope you found this helpful.